Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and fellow Kerbonauts. Uh, welcome to KSP. Uh, today's not going to be a typical episode. I'm just going to demonstrate a few things that I've been working on. Uh, don't worry, I'm going to be landing on Duna and exploring the solar system, and I'm working on that. But it's been, uh, well, let's shall we, shall we say a, a, a lot more of a challenge than I previously thought. Um, so recently I've been doing a little bit of things like a side project, just been playing around with a few mods, and I thought I was going to show you that today. First of all, I am going to apologise for the audio. As I said in my Borderlands video, uh, my mic is the one that I bought uh, is much poorer quality than I had imagined, and unfortunately I haven't been able to take it back or get a new one yet. Uh, that will be rectified shortly. Uh, I'm currently using the recording software, Hooray, which means that it won't glitch and have a spaz after a certain uh, <laughs> a certain amount of time, like my old one did. Uh, so that's that's fixed. You won't be missing any more footage of anything. Uh, so yeah, and the audio will be improved greatly when I get my new mic, because uh, I'm going to be getting the same one that many YouTubers use. Uh, but that will be along in its way shortly, so I thought we'd just get jumped straight in today, and I'll show you some of the things that I'm using. I've got a mod installed, uh, a Satellites mod, uh, which is, I think it's called SatTech or something like that. Which basically allows you to launch satellites, and they g it gives them a use, instead of just being a random object in space. Um, it gives them a use and it allows them to relay the signal from Kerbal Space Center to various places and as a result um, you can send uh, unmanned missions to places and have them controlled from KSC it does a few far more things like you can launch motherships up that send out its own signal and and uh, hence you know replicate the uh, the exact Apollo missions by l dropping a ship down and then having it come back up and redock and a few things I've got a few other mods installed um, I'll just show you show you one now uh, by going to the view this satellite if it will load <laughs> whoa here we go uh, so this is my satellite uh, and the other mod uh, that I've got installed as you probably will see from there is a mod called Mech Jeb uh, some of you probably know about it but essentially it's an autopilot that does various things like getting you into orbit uh, each one of these buttons um, uh, mechanics will do a separate thing uh, one of them will get into orbit. Now, lots of people. One of them will get you into orbit. Well, uh, and a few other things. Uh, lots of people don't like this mod, particularly because they think it's cheating, and I have the tendency to agree with them. However, the reason why I've been using it is because I've had to get a lot of satellites in into orbit, and I wanted to make sure that they're all in a particularly neat orbit, which I can do, but it's just time-consuming without um, launching 12 ships up into orbit and waiting for them to get into orbit and waiting for them to get some moon. Uh, well, uh, to say the least, it, it takes time. Uh, so as you can as you can see, uh, there's the there's the uh, KSC. Uh, that goes to Comsat one, which then gets bounced to Comsat two, which is where I'm at now. All of them can receive a signal, and all of them will send a signal to, if I can find it, the Mun, uh, which will then transmit any signal it gets, as you can see there. Uh, to pretty much any surface on the moon apart from uh, extreme poles uh, which you can't reach um, so yeah well uh, I thought I thought we'd land a rover completely uh, remote controlled rover uh, on the moon today uh, just as a quick demonstration um, I've obviously got a, a mod installed uh, which uh, allows rovers into the game it adds rovers into the game uh, oops uh, uh, I've also got a mod which adds fairings, uh, which is exactly the same, by the, made by the same guy that makes the satellite mod. Uh, one rover, there we go. And by fairings, I mean things that that cover, and like that. Here we go. So there's the rover, and the rover is completely compatible with the mod, with this mod, which is why I got it, so that it can be used um, remote control. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I did it. So yeah. Um, have I got anything else installed? I do have the uh, Keythane mod installed, but I'm not using it because I'm not good enough to use it yet uh, without uh, MechJeb. Uh, I'm going to be landing on Duna uh, completely manually. I won't, I won't be using MechJeb for that. Um, so yeah, uh, let, let's get started. Let's launch this Moon Rover. I'll be using MechJeb today for it, just to demonstrate it without boring you uh, to death of me crashing endlessly and wasting your time, so uh, uh, also give me a chance to do a bit of a mod spotlight, as it were, on MechJeb. 
show people some people that will use it they're wondering to get it so basically when you build it you have to add an, uh, a megjet module like a little package to the uh, pod and it'll make it automatically controlled so uh, what to do what to do what, 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 right, 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 right. so you pick an orbit altitude and then you click engage now when you press spacebar it will do everything itself it'll throttle up it'll thrust it'll stage as long as you've got all of them clicked and until you're into an orbit assuming your ship can get into an orbit so uh, let's begin if the space bar will work there we go um, so as you can see it's doing everything itself my hand is not on the keyboard it's using SAS itself it's gimbling itself it'll start to do a gravity turn when it gets to an appropriate altitude I think about 50-60 kilometers and then it'll coast to the apoapsis and then it'll burn again and get you into the orbit of the altitude that you desire basically uh, it's really quite useful uh, this little box here is a, um, for the comsat uh, for the satellite mod uh, it looks particularly complicated but it, it really isn't um, once you get used to it I was a bit confused at first but all you realize is that it just lists all the satellites that are actually on it the dishes and basically you can point it at a planet instead of having to point at an individual thing and it sends a signal to a, a place you don't have to worry about it receiving a signal because um, if it's within an appropriate range it'll automatically receive it so some dishes have longer range some, some don't um, so yeah uh, let's do this that that local control there is in red because I'm not ha I don't have a manned ship, um, so I can't control it locally. I have to control it by a satellite, which is basically what's happening now. Um, it's being controlled by signal strength straight from there up to there. Um, and there we go. That worked pretty smoothly actually. Uh, it's auto staged rather nicely. Um, yeah pretty well uh, you can do all sorts with Mac Jeb actually I mean not just get into war but you can transfer to the moon you can do orbital operations like that's the information which is rather useful even if you're not using it on autopilot it's useful to have the information like that uh, where, where is it orbital operations there we go uh, so you know it allows you to adjust your periapsis your apoapsis more more evenly here, circularize your orbits and all sorts of fancy stuff. There's a rendezvous, rendezvous module, which, as far as I'm aware, doesn't actually rendezvous for you. It just tells you when to burn, because I think it's a bit too complicated for um, Make Jeb to do that for you. But it's uh, it's useful. I haven't had to rendezvous with anything yet. I haven't dabbled, dabbled in space station making. Oh, this is a useful thing. Uh, we cost into the apoapsis now. Uh, is automate basically what it allows you to do is load scripts into a certain folder and then run these scripts and what these scripts do is they just use different functions of MechJeb in a row so like you can get something that will take you to the moon by using the ascent autopilot then the transfer function and then the landing autopilot and it'll do it automatically for you uh, no matter where the moon is and where you are and stuff now I don't think there's one that takes you to Duna yet because you have to wait a long time and Duna has to be in the correct place where you can launch and stuff like that and I don't think it has that function in it uh, but I'm sure someone will work it out if you're good with programming and script writing it's probably fun to have a dabble with that although myself not so much uh, what's this? phase angles hmm. uh, never use this really um, I'm guessing it just tells you the angles so you know exactly what phase angle is, but I'm sure it's something to do with the uh, angle that you have to burn at to an injection angle, I'm guessing. Uh, instrument landing system. Again, I've not used this because I've only ever used the landing autopilot just to see what it does, but I don't know what this does. I think this is just like a... allows you to manually land with a bit more information, I'm guessing. Hmm. Cool. Uh, I believe that's us. That's so I think we're in orbit now. Yeah, that's correct. We're in a we're in a hundred kilometer orbit, pretty much bang on. There we go. Uh now where's the moon? And if we burn now it's gonna be too late. So uh we'll use we'll use the orbital operations. And we'll 
transfer to Minmus. Not Minmus. What am I about? We'll transfer to the Mun. Because if we transfer to Minmus, I'm going to be out of range. <laughs> and that's not a good idea. So we'll transfer to the Mun. All you have to do is click it. Uh, that tells you the periapsis, the closest point to the Mun you get to as you fly past it, basically. And 200 kilometers is fine. Uh, so we'll just click that. And it warps to the correct point um, for you. As you can see there, that's how that's where we're getting the signal from. That's us, and the signal's being bounced from there to Comsat three to Comsat two to us. Um, really, if I wanted to, um, so I could launch uh, automated things to the North Pole. I could get things going in the pole to pole orbit, <sighs> but I'm uh, I'm not that organised yet. It took me a long time to work out how to do this, and uh, yeah. Uh, we're about to get to the moon, so it should start burning now. Should have just seen moon rise. There we go. Now uh, it's getting into the right position, I think. And it'll start burning. Uh, annoyingly, annoyingly though, um, the Apple operations doesn't it doesn't auto stage for you. Um, uh, so I'll have to do that. Otherwise, it'll just leave the throttle up and it won't be going anywhere. Um, so here, here we go. I think. Yes. Ah. And hit ready. Get ready to hit the space bar. And launch the secondary rockets. Uh, now, apparently these rockets are very efficient in space, but not efficient in an atmosphere. Uh, hence why I've got two strapped to a large tank. Uh, I think they're designed for interplanetary travel, which is why they added them into this update, because they're more efficient. Um, not necessarily the fastest way to get somewhere, but uh, pretty much definitely the, the, the most efficient way. So I've strapped them onto this rocket to make sure I have plenty of, plenty of fuel to get to, um, to, get to the moon. Um, and I found out that this design of rocket is quite efficient. Um, it has a, a vast excess of fuel. Um, so. I think I think it could be a potential to, for interplanetary travel if I reduce the weight a bit and maybe add a bit extra fuel. Uh, not necessarily a return trip travel, but nonetheless still a trip. Um, yeah, map view. So look where we go. Where are we at, Holmes? And there we go. It's adjusting the periapsis to 200, I think. Boom, and there we go instant moon or orbit. Uh, so let's, uh, let's fast forward, let's do a bit of fancy fast forwarding. Oh no, uh, I don't like it when it does that. Uh, there we go, we're starting to receive signal from the uh, moon now, as soon as we went out of range of Kerbin. Uh, because we've only got a short length uh, receiver on the uh, rover, I um, guess it from the nearest, uh, the nearest uh, satellite, which then apparently was the moon. We can stop now. Stop. Stop. <laughs> uh, so let's circularize the orbit ourselves because I like doing that. Hopefully this works. No, 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 no. Get back here. Let's get the smart ASS. Or smart ass, as the uh, developers using the uh, pub. Get the rotation. Stop. Stop, 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 stop. I'll do. Off. And we'll burn. Bring the orbit in. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. A bit of a. It's a problem with Mech Jeb and these concepts. They clutter the uh, They clutter the screen up. Screen up a bit. Bring it down a bit. Um, 
much there. Oh, that'll do it, I think. We'll go around a bit. Um, so we land on the lights, bright side. As you can see, the uh, blue line represents the where the signal's being bounced. So it's being bounced from cabin to here. Can't really see where it's coming from, I don't think. Just, yeah, it just points to uh, cabin. Oh well. And now we'll, we'll, we'll get rid of that. And we'll open up the landing autopilot and just click land. And it lands nearest spot wherever you are and it starts burning and and all sorts for you. There we go. I uh, just wanted to land on the bright side of the moon so I could show you the landing procedure of the ship because it's pretty cool. If I get it right and not crash into it. Remembering that H&N is up and down directly for the RCS. A bit of an inclination, inclined orbit here but oh well. It's going okay, I believe. Uh, I'm going to have to take over from the landing art pilot because the uh, mech jeb won't realise that you have to disconnect and use the RCS. It'll only use main engines. Um, which is fine, because when I get a bit closer... Um, uh, I'll, uh, I'll switch over to manual. Um... It's going to wear it as well. It doesn't auto warp the landing system, so let's let's give it a bit of a warp. Won't be too fast. I'll probably do. There you go. It's now adjusting again. It'll probably do a bit of a burn. I think. Apparently not. Nope, still doesn't want to burn. Do you know what? Let's uh let's get rid of these fairings. Whoa. I'm not expecting that. It's probably not the best thing I should have done that minute in space where they weren't gonna crash into us. And we'll probably wait till about 5,000, well, I say 5,000 meters, I don't know exactly know how high we are, let's... Uh, where are we, are going to land in a crater? We are not, we are going to land to the right of the crater. So I'm guessing it's going to be relatively accurate, the, uh, the altitude. Maybe a couple of thousand out, so probably when it gets about seven thousand. Hmm, we'll see. The uh, the the that's another thing about make jeb and the landing. It's not the most necessarily most efficient way to do it. It's just a way to do it. The easiest, the most simple way to do it. This will just continually burn and slightly get higher throttling as it gets closer and closer. The most efficient way actually is to when you're just above it, full throttle for as short as amount of time as possible is the most efficient way apparently to land. Uh, as far as fuel's concerned. And this doesn't quite do that. But uh, nonetheless, it's still a way and we have plenty of fuel left. I mean, these there's two engines sapping from that tank and it just doesn't use it at all. And we've got another two tanks left over as well. But we're going we're gonna to be dispatching anything from there, even, when the, even if there's fuel left for it, because we cannot land on two legs. Or rather we could, but we'd probably just fall over. And we're getting pretty close to the surface here, actually. It's going to be close. It's going to be a close one.
Maybe not. Still a ways off, <laughs> ways off here. As you can see, I think them little rings just around the tanks are the RCS. The ones in the middle are the RCS. There we go. That's it. It's H for upwards. That touch. So I might have to wait a little bit longer because we're going down a lot slower than I'd anticipated. Um. Oops. Oh, there we go. We're getting there now. Give another 500 meters, and then uh, I'll cut the throttle, eject the rover, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll 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 RCS thrust our way down. Oh, we don't want to do that. There we go. You can go down. No. This isn't gonna work. This isn't gonna work. 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 There we go. Apparently it's a bit <laughs> a bit bouncy. For some reason it wouldn't let me use the uh, it wouldn't let me take over manually and it was still trying to land itself. Uh, come on. There we go. Touchdown. Warning, two third little thrust to land. Disable motor, turn handbrake on, cruise control, turn lights on. That's pretty cool. Now, uh, that still uses the RCS, so I think we've got to use the IJK to land here. Now, we, we, this is completely, this, this would not work if I wasn't receiving a signal. That box there has to receive a signal to work. Just to prove that I'm receiving a signal. Anywhere I can go now, pretty much within range, um, is going to have a signal. Um, there's nowhere I can go, feasibly go, that's going to be out of range right now. I could smash off the aerial and show you that it would say there'd be no relay path there. It'd say it wouldn't relay. Mission control to ComSat uh, uh, 6 to uh, Muna ComSat 4 to the Moon Rover. That's the relay so far. If I fast forward it, that'll change. Let's stop that there. If we fast forward, that'll change bit by bit as the rotation changes. There you go, it's got longer. Mission to control to ComSat 1, to ComSat 3, to MCS 3, to the Monroe. Uh, now let's try and smash this thing up. <laughs> um, let's get some. And just get rid of the aerial, hopefully. It's supposed to be enough uh, for us to get back into orbit, but I'm I'm guessing not. I've got a lot of extra weight on this on this thing that's not usually on it. I guess quite a bit of speed going. <laughs> there we go. Ah, oh, rather that didn't work. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> oh well. I just thought I'd show you that. Um, uh, yeah, just thought I'd show you that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, yeah. Th thanks for watching, guys. I'll, I'll be back shortly with a Duna mission. Uh, done all vanilla. No, no mods. Um, and we'll be landing on Duna, if I can work out how to do it with all this vastly complicated maths talk that's going all over the forums. Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah guys. Um, yeah, so uh, I'll, I'll see you next time. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, adios.